way of doing things. It seems to be uh, changing on Facebook the way they uh, they share live footage. So we are going with this uh, and trying it. Um, hopefully, oh, hopefully you can see me. Uh, it's a little bit flicky at the moment, but uh, if you can hear and see us, uh, please let us know. It's it's always good uh, to know that we have someone able to tune in and hear. Um, this is our service for Greater Grass Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. If you would like to join us in person, please come at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. We meet in in uh, our building there together, or you could get in touch if you'd like to meet up at another time. Um, we're also um, online again on a Wednesday night, 7.30, um, probably on this Facebook page. Uh, we also have the GGE Church Facebook page. Uh, where we share the messages on Sunday morning and also you can find us at ggechurch.co.uk on the internet and at YouTube Greater Grace Evangelical Church so those are the uh, directions and um, the details so um, tonight we're going to be opening God's Word in a moment and just uh, looking a little bit further at the passage we looked at this morning um, that was in Acts chapter 7. Before we do that, let's pray. Let's give this time uh, to you. One other announcement is for those of you who knew Margaret Taylor, uh, a dear friend of ours, a sister in the Lord. Her funeral is going to be on the uh, 11th of October at 2.40 in the afternoon at the crematorium. And we will also be doing uh, a Thanksgiving service the same afternoon. Uh, later on we don't know exactly when yet probably around half past three just to give us time to get between the two venues so we're thinking um, that people would be welcome to join us then <coughs> so please come and, and join with us tonight as you can see we're back inside it's a little bit too dark to be outside now um, but we're going to trust God with it. Let's pray. Let's give this time um, to the Lord and see what God does with our evening tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you now. And we just give you our, our praise, our focus, our attention. Lord, we come to you, and as we were saying this morning, our desire is to surrender to you. That we had that uh, subject this morning who made you uh, a judge over over us and who made me a judge over you thank you Lord for the difference in the two approaches that we saw this morning Lord and we thank you for the heart of our Saviour and we thank you for who you are guide us tonight Lord as we open your word again truth guide us as we as we seek your face touch hearts tonight Lord we pray and um, we ask Lord that this would be a, a special season we just pray that you would uh, fill us with your life fill us with your spirit uh, and guide us now strengthen us and quicken us touch hearts Lord we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen So um, tonight we're going to be uh, looking at uh, Acts chapter 7 this morning. is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear wow this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai 
and with our fathers who received who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and their hearts turned back unto Egypt wow now let's pray Heavenly Father we, we thank you Lord again Lord, for these words uh, reading on a little bit further from this morning Lord and uh, we just thank you for the preaching of Stephen as we said this morning uh, this man who, who lost his life for his faith but he preached to the Jews and he preached to the Jews about their attitude towards Moses and their attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Lord uh, that actually this message is for us tonight we ask that you would touch those that need a very special touch Lord uh, we ask for your intimate uh, meeting with us Lord now we pray for those that uh, that uh, need uh, healing Lord we think of Joyce Morley as well we think of Anne's parents uh, as Anne Mulligan goes down to visit her father who has been in the hospital and our mother is also sick Lord we pray that you'd minister life there and healing Lord touch for others Lord and again we think of um, people that we've prayed for over the, this last season uh, Ruby's grandson Richard and a titler uh, different ones for Ewan uh, Trotter for Jabez Dean people who have been diagnosed with Covid Lord we pray that you protect their Lord have your hand upon each life Lord upon each family we pray that you cover the school this this week with the uh, different uh, things that are going on Lord and uh, protect their Lord and just be with each one Lord and bless our church Lord we pray bless our fellowship bless our life and Lord we trust you we seek you Lord and we desire you fill us with your spirit Lord now we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen wow ok so as we looked at uh, that passage tonight uh, slightly different emphasis from this morning this morning we started off with the fact that actually uh, um, this is that Moses that they refused saying who made thee a ruler and judge the same did Moses send to be a, a, a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared unto him in the bush he brought them out of after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years it's amazing isn't it when you think about that the Jews particularly the Jews the, the Sadducees the high priest those that had crucified Jesus and those that would actually by the end of this chapter they would stone Stephen to death their hatred and their, their murderous intent was so uh, livid uh, so powerful against anybody who dared to say something slightly different to their perception of who Moses was the law as they saw it, the law of God in, in, in Moses' hand in Moses' words and like they were very zealous very jealous about uh, the, what Moses had said and yet Stephen here as he preaches the Lord Jesus Christ he points out to them but hang on a minute our forefathers they rejected Moses they said who made you a ruler over us who, who actually who put you in charge 
We don't want you to rule over us. We don't want you coming in and setting us free from Egypt. We're okay in Egypt. We're fine here. And it's like this whole thing about, you know, the, the straw for the bricks. You know, you've got involved and you've made problems for us with Pharaoh and now we don't have straw for bricks anymore. And they resented the fact that, that actually Moses was raised up by God to deliver them. They resented that deliverance. And as we read in these verses tonight, what happened was that when they went out into the wilderness, it says there they turned their hearts back to Egypt. Oh, let's go back there. Oh, we were better off there. Oh, um, didn't we have cucumbers? Didn't we have garlic? Uh, you know, uh, you remember all those other things there, and wasn't it better there? And and let's let's go back. No, they were. This was not a nation that championed Moses and said how wonderful Moses was. This was a nation that actually God would have wiped out if you remember in the book of Numbers when they went into the promised land to view it the spies were sent in and what happened they gave an evil report and God said let me just destroy these people and I'll raise up a nation from you and Moses said no Lord no this is uh, uh, this is not a good testimony to the nations around because they'll say that God, that God was not able to bring them out of Egypt and so he let them die in the wilderness uh, and it will reflect badly on you uh, and the Lord for from the purposes of his grace he relented I think he did that also to see what Moses heart would be like actually uh, but yeah so you know um, this was a people that rebelled against Moses this was a people who actually hated Moses and resented his, his involvement, who didn't go after him and sort of questioned his authority. Remember the rebellion of Korah? Korah, if you study it out, Korah was actually Moses' own cousin, his first cousin. Now think about that. A member of his own family raising up a rebellion against him and sort of saying we don't want this man to rule over us anymore and remember God did something very uh, peculiar there and the earth swallowed up those people that were rebelling against him then remember also that Miriam and Aaron now who did who did who did Moses have by him he had his brother and sister support and uh, and the very closest people to him they also um, told him off. They told him he'd done the wrong thing. And, 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 and God actually smote Miriam with, with leprosy. Wow. And, um, and again, Moses in, interceded for them. And he's like, wow, this is, this is the thing, you know, like, Moses is this held up by the Sadducees as well. He was our leader. He was the, he was the one who gave us the law. We've always supported Moses. We were, but actually, you know what? If these same people had been alive at the time of Moses, they probably would have been rebelling against him. They probably would have been finding all of the faults and saying, "We don't want this man anymore. We don't. We are going to join the rebellion. We're going to. We're going to undermine what he says." And actually, they would have been that they would have had that same heart. And you say, well, how can you know that? You don't know that. But the point is, Stephen is saying, you do have that same heart. Because the Lord Jesus Christ came. And as we read that verse tonight, somebody that will be um, like unto Moses, uh, a prophet shall come, uh, and the Lord God shall raise him up, and to you of your brethren like unto me him shall you hear a messiah was going to come long prophesied the Sadducees were waiting for the messiah the Pharisees were waiting for the messiah but then actually when the messiah came they didn't recognize him they didn't um, listen to him just in the same way that their forefathers had turned their back on Moses and desired Egypt 
in the same way um, the priesthood the rulers of the synagogues the those that, that were most senior and most learned in the Jewish law turned their back on the Lord Jesus Christ and said crucify him this is the same high priest that said it is expedient that one man should die for the people rather than the whole nation should perish God put those words into his mouth because actually it was God's plan that one man should die for the people that his son would be a, a sacrifice for sin we got to share that today on the streets uh, with a young man called Lucas um, very receptive we had some very interesting contacts today some very <laughs> um, <laughs> very lively conversations and, and, and interesting questions from certain people certainly very young people teenagers and uh, uh, the like so you know it was a, an interesting time this afternoon but you know what that was the plan Jesus was come to die for it, for the nation for the nation of Israel but for the sins of the whole world and actually just in the same way that Moses had been rejected at the time Moses had been rejected when he brought the law think about that as well Moses hadn't even come down from the mountain with the tablets of the law and they'd already made a golden calf that's crazy isn't it that actually um, you know they'd, they'd already uh, rebelled against him before he'd even got there it says that in verse 41 here and they made a calf uh, in those days and offered sacrifices unto an idol uh, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands wow isn't that the, the, the real essence of it I want to rejoice in the work of my own hands I want to rejoice in my own morality my own ideas I choose my own morality nobody gives me anything from outside I choose what is, is right, I choose what is wrong and I, I rejoice in the work of my own hands I choose what God's laws are and I choose the way that I worship God and I choose what whether I even worship a God whether I believe there is a God or not it's all down to me it's all down to my hands yeah that's the world we live in today and that's every human heart you know we're no better we've done that ourselves but we've discovered that actually the way of peace and the way of fulfillment and the way of forgiveness is to find a saviour who paid for our failings because the works of our own hand they last for a very short time don't they the works of our hand they don't they don't satisfy they don't really restore us like we can't undo the works of our own hand we can't go back and, uh, and undo the wrong things that we've done but we can be forgiven and the Lord Jesus Christ came as the perfect sacrifice for us to be forgiven and for healing and life to be engendered that was the point for the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ it was the verse we finished on this morning from John's Gospel 117 grace and truth came by Jesus Christ that was the difference as we said the law imposed itself on mankind there is no escape from the law is there there is no escape from natural law from moral law it's like well it's there and we have to obey it I killed someone well I have to pay the price for it I stole something we actually uh, witnessed somebody steal something today from a shop and uh, my wife had the the opportunity to try and witness to them afterwards uh, <laughs> But you know what? Uh, you know God is gracious, uh, and uh, they won't 
very receptive, to be honest. But there we go. But the thing was, you know, we could have shared with them forgiveness uh, and, and right and what is truth and what is right. We could have given them a sense of right and wrong and a sense of self-respect and value. But they chose not to, to listen. Uh, you, you think about that, you know, like that. The, the law is over everyone. In the same way that, like, um, the, the man said to Moses back in Exodus uh, chapter 2, who made you a, a, a prince and a judge over us? Who gave you the right? Who, you know, is that a, 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 a word we hear today? Is that a phrase that we hear today? Who, who, how do you have the right to judge me? Yeah, that's it. That is the essence of our age, really, isn't it? Who made you a judge over me? Uh, I don't know, what right have you got to judge me? That is the essence of the world that we live in today. But you know what? Actually, God has the right to judge. God who created life has the right to judge. But the difference was, as we read uh, today in, uh, in, in Luke 12, 14, Jesus, when the man had seen it in, in verse 13, he says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak unto my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. He says, And he said unto him, Man who made me a judge and divider over you. The question is completely turned around. Jesus is saying, Hey, do I want to be your judge? Have you asked me to be your judge? Is it right for me to be your judge? Are you prepared for me to be your judge? It's quite ironic, isn't it? Because actually the Lord Jesus Christ is God himself. And he is fit to judge. He's the only one who is fit to judge. And he's the only one who will definitely judge everyone. But Jesus in his gentleness says, you know, who is it that made me your judge? Who gives me that authority? What Jesus is really saying is, do you give me that authority? When Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler, he said, you know, you know, he said, good teacher, and then Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is none good but God. Now, you could say, well, he, he was, uh, was Jesus being very pedantic, very prissy, or was he actually testing the guy's heart? Do you believe that I'm God? Are you giving me that authority? Um, do you acknowledge that there is nobody good but God or are you living in a morality that is just based on your own works and it's like well I'm quite good and that person's a little bit better but that person's nowhere near as good as me that's how people live today so often but Jesus was saying hey are you prepared to really are you trust me are you prepared uh, to go with it are you prepared to really uh, let me into your life and let me take control? It's a good question, isn't it? It's an interesting point. And, and uh, Stephen goes on to say, well, um, you know, in... Verse 52, he says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed bef before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have now, you have been now the betrayers and murderers, and who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it when they heard these things they were cut 
to the heart and they gnashed with him uh, on him with their teeth and being <laughs> yeah of being full of the Holy Spirit looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and he said behold I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice Lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he had said this he fell asleep well yeah Stephen was martyred for his faith uh, but what did he say he said well hang on a minute uh, you actually as the Jews as the Jewish nation look at your own history and look what happened when, you, when prophets were raised up and you killed them you killed them again and again every time some of God raised up people to speak to you if you didn't like what they said then you killed them Jesus says the same thing uh, in Matthew uh, 23 uh, 35 he says that upon you may come all the right the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Barachias uh, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar uh, you know this is a this is an impressive verse because actually what, what we're talking about there is uh, <laughs> Jesus saying yes remember the prophets from the very first from Abel from the beginning of creation and actually uh, right up to uh, much later in the history of the nation Zacharias who was who was killed you can read the story of that actually uh, I should have checked where it was in the Old Testament then. but it, it's like it's there you know he, he dies it, when it, preaching God's word and he's killed in the temple think about that they didn't even acknowledge the sanctity of God's house but they killed him there uh, in, in the temple uh, near to the altar uh, why? because he spoke the truth because he spoke God's word and they didn't like it it was a challenge silence that person we don't want to hear their voice silence a message that we don't like let's eradicate every trace of somebody who says something that makes us feel uncomfortable or something that challenges the status quo challenges the authorities challenges the religious um, ideas of the day challenges the moral standpoint that we've taken wow does it sound familiar could it happen again yeah but not only that, Jesus, when he quotes that verse, when he when he, he, he says that, uh, I like it as well because it, in the English language, it doesn't actually work in the original language, but in the English language, you've got, also got Abel to Zacharias. You've got A to Z. I mean, I know that, you know, obviously that, that doesn't work for the Hebrew. It doesn't work for the Greek. Um, but for, for the... Uh, rest of the Western world that uses the Roman alphabet it is I think again maybe God's little joke that it turns out to be an A to Z of prophets that were killed by um, by the Jews uh, who, and God's people 
minister, you know, who didn't like what they said. In other words, from the beginning to the end. But also, what you find there as well is from Genesis chapter 4. And again, the Hebrew um, canon of scripture. Their last book in the, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the order that they had them, was, was Second Chronicles. And actually, Zacharias, the story of, of Zacharias, is found there at the, end, at the latter part of Second Chronicles. The Jews have 24 books. Um, if you want to find out more about that, ask me uh, about it. They, they divided the, the books up differently. Um, Kings and Samuel and, and Chronicles, we have them as all of those as two books. They just have them as one. Uh, Nehemiah and Ezra with one book as well and the, all of the, the minor prophets uh, the twelve minor prophets was one a book called the twelve prophets so uh, uh, they had twenty four books of the Jewish uh, canon uh, of scripture um, and that was the again Jesus saying hey I vindicate all of the books of the Old Testament from the beginning to the end I actually I, I put my stamp of approval on them. This is why you know we have those books in our Bible today. Uh, we have them in a different order, obviously. Uh, we have 39 in the Old Testament, but we've divided them up differently. Um, but yeah, Jesus saying, "Hey, all of this is God's word. All of this is true." And actually, the heart of mankind is the same. And the rebellion of mankind is the same. And the false religion of mankind is the same. And actually the religious heart of man is just as big a sin as any other. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Whatever the, uh, the, the thoughts are, whatever the, the, the uh, attack is, against truth truth is there in the Lord Jesus Christ however it works out grace is there in the Lord Jesus Christ he came to lay down his life he came to lay down his life for the very people who murdered him for the very people who put sent him to the cross in fact um, when Peter preaches in Acts chapter 2 what do you see is that some of the people there who were there who cried out crucified they get saved they become Christians they become followers of the Lord Jesus Christ we saw that reference there as well that um, those that martyred Stephen laid down their coats at the feet of someone called Saul that was Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus became a great persecutor of the Christian church. He, he went round rounding up people, uh, taking them away to the authorities, killing them for their faith. He saw the martyrdom of Stephen and thought, well, this is a great idea. Maybe I want to do this for a living. And, and his re religious zeal was so powerful. And he went out looking for people but guess what Jesus came to him and met him and he also became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and anyone who actually uh, were, had a part in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ his death paid for their sin he laid down his life for them, for their sin, for their guilt. And let's face it, every one of us had a part in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, well, hang on a minute, I wasn't even born. How could I be blamed for it? We are all sinners. And the Lord Jesus Christ came to pay the price for sin. He came to lay down his life because mankind needed a saviour. And if any one of us have done anything that we're guilty of, that we're conscious of, 
but we realize that we are a sinner then actually we are just as guilty as those people of sending the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross because he went for my guilt for my sin for your guilt for your sin he went for everyone's guilt the guilt of the whole world was laid upon him and he took that price and he paid it he took that guilt and he uh, bore the punishment for it why? so that we could go free so that grace could abound and that's the point grace and truth came through Jesus Christ the law have imposed itself Moses had gone and sort of said hey don't do that stop stop worrying your brother there and the man turned around and said who are you to tell me what to do Moses is a picture of the law in scripture the law could not take them into the promised land Moses didn't get into the promised land but the Lord Jesus Christ grace took them into the promised land grace is able to deliver and the Lord Jesus Christ is that uh, bringer of grace and we have that uh, difference there that there would, be, there would come a better way there would come a new covenant a new testament it's interesting we use that word testament don't we the last will and testament the book of Hebrews it tells us that that actually um, a testament uh, last will and testament it only comes into place into force when someone dies and the Lord Jesus Christ he died he gave his life for us so that the new covenant the new testament would come into power and thankfully for us he rose again from the dead this is what Stephen was proclaiming this is what the Sadducees hated so much the Sadducees the, the um, high priest of the day they didn't believe in resurrection and this is why they killed Stephen for saying the, something that they didn't want to hear they didn't want to agree with and they wouldn't believe was true but the Lord Jesus Christ had raised from the dead 500 of people had seen it there was no question of there was no way of keeping it quiet and uh, there was no way that this was going to go away and he had proved to them that resurrection life was possible and he also proved to us that forgiveness was possible forgiveness of sin freedom from guilt and newness of life let's pray Heavenly Father Lord we thank you we worship you Lord for the, the fact that you came for us you came on our behalf you came to lay down your life for us you came to pay that price we thank you Lord we worship you we love you tonight Lord and we just lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ thank you Lord thank you Lord that the, the law was incomplete thank you Lord that the vision of the prophets was partial and Lord in the same way that people when they heard the law they rejected it when they heard the prophets they rejected them and Lord when truth came in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ he was rejected on the earth but Lord we see the error of our ways we see our tendency to put our own laws in place our own morality our own judgment our own ideas, our own opinions above you Lord and say who made you a judge over me but actually you come in gentleness and said yes ok who made me a judge over you do you will you is that right, is that possible 
And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that yes, the best judge we can have is one who is a God of all grace, a God of forgiveness, a God of healing, a God of life, a God of mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that with you there is plenteous mercy. And Lord, we just pray if there's anyone out there who has never understood this, who's never realised that they could be forgiven. They can have newness of life. They can have a new covenant, a new agreement, a new relationship with the living God. Lord, we just pray that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I, I need forgiveness, I need healing. I need something to change. And I trust you, Lord. And I give you the authority to be the one who has the power over my life. Because I trust you as a God of forgiveness. As a God of grace. And I accept that what you did on the cross was for me. It was powerful. And I believe it and I want it for my life. And I trust you now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, well, so we're going to sign off now. Uh, it's good we are able to see a few people joining us tonight, so that's, uh, that's, that's good to know. Um, apologies that the format seems to come up slightly differently at the moment, so we're always not quite sure what's how how things are being seen the other side so thank you for your comments thank you for your your uh your um tuning in there and uh we can uh, tell that it is working okay so uh, for those of you out there hopefully we'll see you soon see you wednesday night and uh maybe in person on sunday as well uh god bless and uh, uh, keep trusting and keep giving the Lord Jesus Christ the power of our lives. <laughs>